If you want Unity 3D, CryEngine, or Unreal Engine tutorials, like, comment, or subscribe for more. In this episode of my comparison series, I will be attempting to recreate the exact same terrain in Unreal Engine, Unity, and CryEngine. Again, I will only be showcasing the workflow and describing the steps I used to achieve the results in each engine respectively. I will not, under any circumstances, say anything overtly negative or positive about the engines because the point of the series is to showcase the engines and their results, not to push you, the viewer, into using any particular engine. In the comments, I encourage you to tell me what you liked and disliked about the results from each engine and if you would like an in-depth tutorial on how to achieve things that I'd showcase in these videos. The Following is a bias alert. Disclaimer, my personal preference for game engines to use is Unity, and I will do my best to be sure that I keep this series as unbiased as possible. I begin with a completely blank project that is the Standard Assets Pack. This is very important as the Standard Assets Pack has the water effects and the basic textures that we will be utilizing in this video. I start off by creating a terrain, and I keep the terrain size to be very small because I don't want it to be extremely large and unwieldy to work with. I then begin to paint the terrain with the base color. In this case, I want a grassy green color. I follow this up with molding the terrain to fit the basic idea structure I have in mind, which in this case would be an island. To achieve this effect, I look for the brush that best fits the cliff like structure I want and start off by creating a basic sketch of where I want the terrain to be risen. I continue this and build up on the terrain layers until the terrain- <laughs> Damn it Unity, stop messing up. <clears throat> build up on the terrain layers until the terrain bits that I want to stick out high above the water is completed. Now I should know that at this point that if I raise the maximum height of the terrain it could be even taller than it currently is, but I think it is fine at this level. I follow this up by painting where it should be like sand in the textured color closest to sand in the standard assets pack. Now I look for and add the water prefab I want to use and add it into the scene. I should note that the Y coordinate does not change how tall it is when you are scaling it, but rather how harsh the waves are. I change the size of the prefab to be extremely large so I can have the water extend infinitely. I then make a couple of duplications and lower them to add a little more depth. Finally, I move the camera to the position I think looks the best and change the far clipping so the waves are rendered far into the distance. This is the final result. I rather like that you can kind of see the silhouette under the water, which is fairly realistic when you have clear waters like these. As with the Unity project, I will also begin with a completely blank project set at maximum quality and with the starter content. I will create a brand new default level as this will allow us to work on the level with minimal objects in the world outlier. So the first thing I want to do is create a terrain with the proper material selected for it. In this case, I will use grass. Next up, I will go through the tools to find the one that I want to use and begin applying them to raise the terrain in areas that will work well for me. As I was going through, I noticed the tool is not updating everything for me as I would like it to. This could be attributed to the fact that I am using the maximum quality and my computer has to fight the engine to keep up with the speed in which I am trying to go. I try to make sure I keep the basic idea for the terrain as I did with Unity and although it is different, I am satisfied with the results as it still contains the general idea I want to use, such as the circular mound in the middle of the terrain with a small offshoot. The next thing to do is create a cube that will serve as the basis for my water. I start off by making it the size that closest matches the terrain and then extend the X and Y coordinates to expand far beyond the horizon of the viewable scene. Next up, I locate the water material I want to use from the starter content and open the material editor. I change the texture coordinates of the shaders to better match the results I am looking for. Where the water is moving, but it is not moving like it is in an active ocean or worse than a spring afternoon. I save the shader and apply the material to the cube. The results look rather good to me, so I build the scene and fix the lighting issues. Now we can view the final results. Not bad, but definitely not a one-to-one -one ratio to the Unity project, but the results look very good nonetheless.
As with the Unity and Unreal Engine projects, I create a blank C++ project with CryEngine. I create a new level and call it Water. I make sure to set my terrain size and height to be the smallest values that I want to use. I then begin to start molding the terrain to start to look the way I want by raising the surface around the brush. I take care to be absolutely certain that I get the dimensions I want for every surface that I want to poke out of the water. This process is fairly quick and easy to do. However, since I have the details set to maximum for the shaders and the terrain quality, my computer likes to lag slightly while the values update. Doesn't really affect the process, just the visuals. Following that, I lower the terrain to the appropriate level so that everything except for what I want will be below the water. I go back over the parts where I think looks a bit thin and make sure to thicken those lines. Then go back to fix where the water doesn't look exactly right to me. Then I paint the colors onto the terrain. I start with a deep and dark green at the harshest brush stroke and add lighter greens with more gradual hard lines for the brush. I top it off with a light touch of yellow green just to add a nice shading effect without using shaders. Now we can take a look at it. Not bad. But I think I want to change the texture hair and add a touch more yellow green. And here we can see our final result. I really like the way this one turned out. So while these terrains are not the exact one-to-one -one ratio like I wanted, we can see without optimization that the effects are fairly similar and easy to create. Each engine has a pro and con associated with them, and as we continue to look and compare the different aspects of the engines, we will be able to choose which engine best suits our needs for developing a game. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Jesco the Rising Phoenix Dev, and I'm signing out.